What is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today I'm bringing you guys another Forza 5 Drift Build. Now, this Drift Build is going to be on the Toyota Sprinter Torino GT Apex 1985. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they'll call it the 86, this is actually, in all seriousness, the, um, the, the one in Forza, the Torino in Forza is actually an 85. You know, not that big of a difference between the two, but if you're trying to be absolutely perfectly correct, it's actually an A85. But, um... Go ahead and see, of course, we've got our initial D paint job, of course. And then we've got, you know, some drifting styles here. But I'm you know what? I'm not really gonna go with any of the pre-made styles. I'm gonna go ahead. You know what though? Mmm. I don't know. I think I really want to go with the uh, initial D one though. I really want to go with Takumi's A86 design. And you know what? You know what? That's what we're doing. We're going with Takumi's A86. Absolutely no doubt about it. Can't wait to upgrade this thing and see what engine swaps they give me. Because, I mean, they're going to give me some pretty crazy engine swaps, but... Toyota Sprinter Treno GT Apex. But yeah, I don't know which... I don't know which engine swaps they're going to give me. They're probably going to give me the option of a V8, but I don't know if I want to put a V8 in this thing. I might not put a V8 in it. So let's see... Head on over to conversion and check the engine swaps. So we've got a 2 liter. We've got a 1.6. We've got the 5.7, which is the LS1. We've got a 2.6 and a 3.7 V3.7 liter. I know the 3.7 liter is a V6. Not sure which ones the others are. Um, I feel like I should. This is a... Oh, inline 6 twin turbo. Pretty sure this is a 2JZ. Pretty sure this is a 2JZ. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and swap it in because I'm, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure that this is a 2JZ. So I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go, go ahead with thinking it's a 2JZ and um, go ahead and swap it in there because it should do well. It should do well in this car. Now, not going to worry about the drivetrain swap because we don't need any drivetrain swaps. No, I didn't want to go, whatever. I was like, I wanted to go do suspension first, but I can, I can work on the, uh, I can work on the drivetrain first. Get the race transmission. Nice thing about working on a car like this, or building up a car like this, is that all the parts are really cheap for it, so you don't have to spend, like, all of your cash to upgrade it. Go ahead and get race diff in there. Now we can go, now we can go and work on the suspension. Um, just maybe street brakes. And I like to go look at this in inc increments because you, oh my god, look at the amount of tucking on the back wheels. That's crazy. Just for like, just in the Forza Vista. That's crazy. There's even a little bit of tucking on the fronts too. That's insane. That's a lot of tucking. That really is like just a lot of wheel tuck. I haven't really seen that much wheel tuck on a on like a um just one of the actual just Forza drops before just without using the slammed glitch at least. All right, now let's go ahead and do let's work on our tires real quick. Get street tires. And no, I didn't want to go to the front tires. Dang it. I wanted to upgrade the rears just a little bit. In fact, no, you know what? Upgrade them all the way. All the way. <laughs> all the way. And for the rims, let's see. Let's check the specialized rims, actually. Um, hmm. So far, I haven't seen. Well, these maybe. Hmm, maybe those. And. I don't know. Possibly, but. Hmm. Trying to see which ones I should get because. Actually, actually, those are nice. I like those. I like these a lot as well. You know what? Let's go with these. Works. Yes, definitely. Work equip 01s. And as far as the wheel size, let's go ahead and... I think 16s are plenty big enough. Plenty big enough. Upgrade the fronts. There we go. Not bad. All right, now... Uh, check the, uh, let's check the aero stuff, because obviously it's a drift car, so you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you, wow, you can only have the Origin kit, or the Forza kit. I like the Origin, Origin kit, actually. I think the Origin kit, um, looks, you know, 
decent, at least, you know, for a body kit, it looks pretty decent, so we're gonna go ahead and go with the Origin kit, because, like I said, it, it works for a drift car, I mean, if you were building a circuit car, I wouldn't advise it, but, you know, for a drift car, it's, it's fine, it's okay. Um, the wing, I don't think I'm gonna do it, I mean, I've seen some A86 drift cars with a wing on the back, a big wing on the back like that, but... I think, you know what, I think I'm gonna just gonna leave that back end just completely blank. And then, for the side skirts, let's see what the origin ones look like. Yeah, we'll take them. And, last but not least, the hood. The origin hood, how much weight does it take off? Four pounds. What's well, a big scoop in there, but, now eh, we'll go with it. Now, what else do we want? I do want to upgrade the engine a little bit, because we're going to need to do that. I mean, we're going to need a little bit of extra power, so... 350... I mean, in a car this light, you don't need a ton of power, so... Go ahead and open up the exhaust all the way. It's 376, with 336 pounds-feet of torque. Now, if I cam it, gets it up to 478 horsepower. Leaves the torque a little bit dropped off, though, at 361 pounds-feet. A big difference between the torque and the horsepower, but... We can, after obviously after upgrading the flywheel, we can go back and go back and correct that with, uh, or at least help the torque a little bit with some race turbos. And that should be plenty of power, plenty of torque to get this thing sideways. I mean, we're under 2,000 pounds here, so pretty light car. Especially a pretty light car for nearly 600 horsepower. Consider that. Consider the power to weight ratio, because power to weight ratio is actually pretty big with this thing. Um... Dang it, I wanted to paint the wheels black, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it. They're okay in their current form, and I want to keep the lettering. So, oh, wait. Did it... Oh, it turned them to black anyway. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'm good with that. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to upgrade so we can just go straight to the test drive mode so we can tune it on the fly if we need to. And let's head over to... I don't know, I was thinking about going to the Test Track Airfield, but you know what, actually, let's go to Test Track Airfield. I don't test cars very much there, I just test them on uh, Top Gear, and I feel like this this track, I don't really, like I said, I don't use it very much, but it's got a lot of cool stuff, it's got a lot of cool corners, and a lot of cool, like, you know, hidden nooks that you can drift into, and, you know, you got these, like, shipping crate sections, it's, it's kind of interesting, I've never actually been to the shipping crate section, I don't know if it actually exists, but, uh, I mean, we'll see. Alright guys, so I'm back and basically what happened was I completely forgot to put a tuning setup on this thing. So I went to drift it and I was like, this feels weird, like this doesn't feel right. And then I realized I didn't put a tuning setup on it. So I, um, as you can see, I've been driving and I've been uh, crashing into a few things. But uh, that's beside the point because I have not yet tried it with a tune. I've only tried it like with the stock setup just with all of the power. So this is my first time actually trying it with an actual tune on it. And I can already tell you, it is much better than before. Um, I just, I cut out all of the parts that had just the stock setup on it, because believe me, it was bad. It was bad, like, and I was wondering, I was wondering why it was so bad, and I was like, this does not feel like an A86. This does not feel like how an A86 should feel, or A85, whatever. And, and then I realized, oh crap, I didn't put it up, uh, a setup on it. So, I came back and I put a setup on it. And it's, whoa, I was about to say way better than before until I completely screwed up. But no, that wasn't the car's fault. That was my fault. But, um, way better. Way better. I mean, in general, it's a really good car now. Now that it's got this setup on it, really, really good car. It handles, handles itself well. It's easy to, really? Really, wall? Misjudge that wall. Anyway, it's easy to control. Um, it can be a bit jumpy at times, but it depends. Like, it can be a bit jumpy. I don't know if that's Forza 5 itself like the handling model or the car um it could be either one but that's the biggest thing that i notice about this car is it can be like i said a bit jumpy at times depending on how much power it has i mean this has almost 600 horsepower and it's somewhat jumpy i mean if you put like 800 900 in here it'd be majorly jumpy i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to try this thing with that much or at least try to i mean i'd try it i'll try any setup in forza but i wouldn't want to try it in terms of like trying to actually do like if I was gonna go and try and set a drift score I wouldn't want to use this thing with like eight or nine hundred horsepower because I feel like it would be whoa I did not even think I was gonna jump like that but I feel like with that much horsepower this thing would be a little bit too jumpy and it's a little bit jumpy already as it is but it whoa see 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 it goes too far 
Oh, God. I was able to save those points and not hit the wall, but... It likes to go really far angle-wise. It likes to go really, really far. And once you learn how to control it, it's okay, but problem is, I'm still learning how to control it. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. That is a weird corner. A weird corner. I'm not used to this track at all. If you guys can't tell, I'm not used to this track at all. I'm, I've never... Well, I've not never been here before. I've been here once. <laughs> I've been here once, and this is the second time I've ever been hit to this track, so... It's a little bit, uh, I don't know, still new. And the surfaces are a little weird, because they're bumpy. And there's bumps that catch you off guard, like right up here, right there. You can see the surface changes, and there's a weird bump, and it kind of throws the car a little bit, which is bad enough in a regular drift car, but when you have something that's jumpy, like this one, then it can be, I don't know, it can be a little bit scary. So, my impressions on this car are it's, uh, it's a little bit jumpy, but it can be effective. If you learn how to control it and, and just let and work with the jumpiness, it's actually really controllable. And let me try and hit that jump at really high speed and well, never mind, I've spun. But um Let's try this again. See if I can hit that jump. Not jump, but like a little rise. You know what? Forget it. It doesn't want to go in a straight line. So if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comments section below what you thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you guys later. Tomcat out.